Hi there. I'm Kurt Steinbrook, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, Florida. And thank you for joining us here for this video. We're going through a series on Romans. And this, this uh, video is going to be a re-recording of the sermon that we had from this past Sunday because we had some audio issues. And so we're not able to use the recording that we had. But we're going to, I'm going to do it this way. Um, though, unfortunately, that means that we also don't have the video and the audio from the rest of the service, which just breaks my heart because we had such awesome, awesome participation from so many youth this Sunday in our Youth Sunday service. We had Thomas reading and Kelsey reading and uh, Gunner helping with one of the messages. Terrell did one of the messages, or actually he was in part of both of the messages. Uh, we also had Griffin uh, doing an amazing job playing piano on one of the songs. So we had all kinds of great participation from our youth. And I wish that you'd be able to see that here, but uh, I'm sure we'll have more great Sundays like that to come. So this is the, the sermon that was delivered on Sunday uh, that has to do with Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. So grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you'd please join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to gather around your word, to, to learn about you, to learn about ourselves, and especially to hear your promises, your promises, the gospel of Jesus Christ that brings our salvation, Lord. Strengthen our faith through your word. Change our hearts and minds. Help us that by the power of your spirit to, to hear your word, to understand it, and to believe it. Lord, I pray that you would settle all the, the distractions around us right now and focus our hearts and our minds on you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So be real. That's a, a phrase that we hear sometimes, or or you know, be authentic. You be you. And what does that mean? What does it mean? when we say that in our culture today. Most of the time, it means essentially do whatever you want, right? Do whatever you want. Don't, don't hide who you really are. Don't filter yourself. Be genuine, right? Be the actual you, which in some cases can be pretty good, right? So that you have the child who pursues their where their interests and their skills are for their career rather than being forced down a career path that maybe their their parents wanted for them or or something else that just doesn't fit who they are or maybe it's it's the the person who's comfortable enough in their skin to admit that they love geeky sci-fi movies i'm one of those people right so in some ways this can be a good thing in other ways though it can be well not a good thing so think about the jerk who is just a jerk to people. And when people try to call him out on it, he says, hey, look, man, I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Really? Maybe you're just being a jerk. You know, or, or the, the gossip who's sharing things and, and you know, just she's just trying to, to, to let everyone know what's really happening here. You know, and if you're in the South, you'd probably start it with, bless your heart, and then go on with just ripping someone to shreds. Right? Sometimes, that concept of being real within our culture, being, you know, don't filter yourself can go down a really dark path. And de being real in our culture, it tends to be a license to just freely act on any impulse you have, no matter how it affects others, or whether it's moral or not, or whether God says that's a good way to live. And when it comes to the impulses that we have to do harmful things, immoral things, right? The, the concept of being real becomes a real problem. Romans, our passage that we're going to be looking at today, it has a different concept of what being authentic and real is really about. Let's take a moment and read through Romans 12, 9 to 21. I'm going to share it here with you real quick. Here you go. This is Romans 12, 9 to 21. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. 
Outdo one another in showing on. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless. Do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So Romans, as you can see here, has a different concept of what being real is and being authentic is. We are to love genuinely, to have an authentic love for one another. And Romans doesn't give us this impression that you can just do whatever you want in order to be authentic. It doesn't say, hey, if you don't really love people, you can go around hating people. That's fine. You know, just be you, be you, right? That's not what it says. We should love one another. We know we should love one another. Jesus told us we should love one another. He said, you should love your neighbor as yourself. You should love. You should love your parents. You should love your spouse. You should love your brothers and sisters. You should love your church family. You should love your neighbors. You should love others. But don't be fake about it. Really love them. Truly love in an authentic and genuine way. Don't just say that you love them. Show that you love them. Let them see it in your actions. That's what genuine love is. Right? So if you don't love them, it's not saying, hey, that's cool. Just stop pretending to love them and do whatever you want. It's saying, that's not cool. You need to love them. But don't fake it. Don't just say it and not do it. You need to really, genuinely love them. So what does real, authentic love look like? That's what this section is talking about. And this, this section of Romans 12, verses 9 to 21, it starts with by saying, let love be genuine. And the, the language there is really, love is genuine. There, there's, there's actually no, no verb there. There's no command there. Like, you're supposed to do this. This is probably better translated as love is this. Love is genuine. This is genuine love is and then goes on. It abhors what is evil. It holds fast to what is good. It loves one another with brotherly affection, right? This is what genuine love is. It's kind of like Romans, or not Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. that says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, right? You've heard that passage. Before. If you've been to a wedding, you've, you've heard that passage before, and it's describing what love is. Yes, it's implicit that we do those things because we're supposed to love. So yes, we should be patient, we should be kind, we should not envy. We should, as it's saying here, abhor what is evil and hold fast to what is good. But the description here, or the, the, the language here, is to describe what genuine love is so that we now know how we can live in the genuine love that God has, has not only shown us, but now is working in us as his children, as those whom he has called and redeemed. Remember, this whole section here is, is after that, therefore, at the beginning of Romans 12, which reminds us that all of this is being told to people who have already been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, who keep their salvation through faith in Jesus Christ as a gift. It's always a gift. It's always through faith. It's not by our works. And so this is not a description of how to become a, a Christian or, or how to keep your salvation. This is a description 
of how now as one who has been called and redeemed by Christ, you now get to live in the love that God has. You get to show the same kind of love to others that Jesus has shown to you. So what does that genuine love look like? Well, in, in verses 9 to 13, it's dealing with love between Christians. And let's look at a few of these. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love doesn't stand by in the face of evil. Love isn't ambivalent to evil. It doesn't just dismiss it or ignore it. Love can't stand evil. At the same time, love clings to what is good. Love strives to hold on to what is good and to see that that good is being done for others as well. Remember, all this is in the context of love for others. And so we don't want to see evil happening to others. We want to fight that evil. And we do want to see good happening to others, so we want to fight for that good. That's what genuine love does. It continues on to say, love is what? Brotherly affection. To love one another with brotherly affection. This is showing that familial relationship that we have. <laughs> Excuse me. Remember, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We have been made God's, God's children. And so there's this love that is placing us on an equal plane, that I love you, and I love this other person, and I love this other person all equally as my brothers and sisters in Christ, and that this is a meaningful and deep love, the love of a family that cannot be broken, love in a brotherly affection. It then continues on to say, outdo one another in honor. And showing on. Now, the outdo part kind of makes this sound like a competition, but that's not really what it's trying to get. Uh, maybe a better translation would be lead one another in the way of showing honor. In other words, the idea here is not a competition, but rather that you're not going to wait to show someone honor until they do something to you. In fact, you're not seeking honor for yourself at all. You're you're looking around for the opportunity to show honor to others. You want to put your foot forward first because you want to show people that they are valuable, that they are meaningful, not only to you, but to God, that their gifts are valuable and meaningful, that their, their presence is valuable and meaningful. And so we honor them. And we don't wait for others to honor us first. We we take the first step, right? Just like Christ took the first step with us, right? He came to us while we were still sinners. He died for us. He came down to us. He didn't wait for us to love him. He didn't wait for us to, to choose him. He chose us. And so we, we take that first step. We show love first. We honor first. And then we allow God to take care of us receiving the love and the honor that we need. It continues on to say that uh, do not be slothful in zeal, right? We should be, we should be zealous. We should be uh, not lazy. Yes, our love is an active love. Love is a verb in the Bible, right? It's not just in our, in our culture, we tend to think of love as this kind of emotional thing. You know, how do I feel today? If you look in the Bible, Love over and over is shown in action. It's something that you do. And we can not love someone both by doing evil to them or by not doing the good that they need. You know, so you think of it as, you know, I could go out and punch someone and that would definitely not be showing love, right? Or if someone got punched by someone else and they needed help and I just walked by, that also isn't showing love, right? Our love should be zealous. Like we, we should be, uh, you know, anxious to do it. We should be active, desiring to show that love for others. We should be fervent in that love. And it continues on, to, you know, speaking of being fervent, that we should be fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord, right? And this is speaking of the spirit, which we have all been given as Christians. Remember the therefore. 
the Holy Spirit that we have been given, who is moving in us to will and to do what God has given us to do, the works that God has given us to do. But then we also respond to that with passion, with, with a joy and a desire to serve the Lord in what the Spirit is leading us to do. And how do we serve the Lord? Primarily by loving others, by serving others as Christ served others. So we, we are fervent in the Spirit. In that language, we are a fire for God, right? We are on fire in the Spirit, and passionate to serve others, to praise the Lord in all that we do. And love uh, rejoices in hope. It's patient in tribulation. It's constant in prayer. You now we're we need hope in this world, don't we? There's a lot of suffering in this world. There's a lot of tribulation in this world. Trials, persecution, difficulty. There, I mean, there's illness. There's all kinds of things that we go through, and we need a hope. We need a real hope, a firm hope, and that's what we have in Christ Jesus. We have that eternal and sure hope that he is with us, that he has redeemed us, that all of that Romans 1 through 12, where he has saved us by his grace, that he has called us, he has made us new, he has called us his children, adopted us, and that he will return and bring us to be with him for all of eternity. We know that this suffering is only temporary. And so we are rejoicing in the hope that we have and we can rejoice in that even as we suffer not that we're happy all the time but that we know we know that christ is with us and that he will deliver us and that this suffering it's only temporary and so we can rejoice in that hope be patient in that tribulation and be in prayer for ourselves and for others. Remember, all this in the, is in the context of that genuine love. So we rejoice in, in hope, but we also share that hope with others, with our brothers and sisters who are suffering. We say, remember what Christ has done. Remember that he is with you. And remember that this is only temporary. That we are standing with them and, and giving them the comfort and courage to stand in that tribulation that they face. And we are praying for them always praying for them. Then it says that we should contribute to the needs of the saints, right? We should be generous to help our brothers and sisters in Christ, those who are in need, right? Love understands that God has provided for us, not only for ourselves, but so that we can then give to the needs of others so that, you know, as, as it was freely given to us, we can freely give to others so that all are provided for. And finally, it says, that we should seek to show hospitality, that we should pursue it. And that hospitality, that word literally means love for strangers, that we should have a love even for people that we haven't met. We should be there seeking opportunities to, to support, to provide, especially those who are brothers and sisters in Christ. Of course, we show hospitality to all people. And we seek it, right? We don't just wait for someone to ask us, we look for the opportunity to be, to show that love to strangers. Now I could go on, you know, we're only at verse 13 at this point, but I feel like at this point, there, there's so many things on this list that it just kind of hits you one after the next and, and your eyes may be spinning already a bit. So I'm going to stop at this point and we're going to cover the rest of these in the videos that we put out during the week as part of our, our blog. So you can uh, look for those videos on our blog or um, on our YouTube channel. We also post them on Facebook and everything uh, to go through the rest of this list um, with, with some good detail there. But let's take a moment to circle back around here to the point that we started, that love is genuine. It's real, right? It's not just words in your mouth. It's also the actions of your hands and feet. And yes, it's the words in your mouth too. And we show love in that way too. But having received this, our salvation, right? Around uh, or through Jesus Christ, 
that we now can love one another with a genuine love, just as Christ loved us with a genuine love. We can do this because this is how God loves us. Right? God abhors what is evil. He clings to what is good. God, he, he didn't wait for us. Right, He stepped forward to show us honor and to show us love. He is absolutely zealous in his service. And he, uh, is, he is the hope that we have. He was patient in tribulation. He suffered for us. He even intercedes in prayer for us. And he provides all the right. God has loved us. And so we now can reflect his love towards others, loving them with an authentic love so they can see Christ and his love. Amen. Amen. If you'd pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you have shown us. It truly is a genuine love. It's not just empty words, Lord. Lord, they're meaningful words because you showed them with your actions. You showed them with Christ on the cross. You showed them in that while we were still sinners, you died for us, that you called us, that you took that first step. Lord, help us then now to show that same love to us. Not because it somehow makes us right before you or, or gets us brownie points with you, but because we know we're already good with you. Because we genuinely love our neighbor, our family member, our coworker, And because we're grateful for the love that you have shown us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for joining me for this video, for this re-recording of this Sunday sermon. Uh, I want to invite you, if you are if you haven't been to faith, or, or even if you have, and you haven't been, been there a while, or if you come every week, I still want to invite you to come back. Uh, we'd love to have you at worship this coming Sunday. So we meet every uh, Sunday at 11 a.m. You can find more information about, um, about faith as well as our services at uh, faithwesleychapel.com. Uh, you can also Google us and you'll find us there, at the Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, Florida. So if you're not in the area, then we invite you to either join us with the live stream or with the recording after the fact. Because if you're not here with us, then I encourage you to uh, be a part of a local church in your area. And then you can catch us later on if we're our service is around the same time as your church. But uh, thank you again for joining us. I hope to see you. Um, for, we're doing these videos throughout Romans. Every day they're coming out. So I hope that you'll uh, join us for another video. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. God bless.